promises. surgery this week. We went and saw her yesterday. And, uh, she's in a sling, so the, the wire doesn't get pulled out, but uh, she's doing well. So, continuing on. And all those with unspoken regrets give a sign of lifted hand. And uh, Lee Permeets, will you take us to the This time, Danny um, is going to come and, and sing for us today. Morning, everybody. Morning. Yeah, this first song here, it's, uh, I think we played this online once, but uh, when the uh, virus came in and, you know, the quarantine started hitting and everything, it's like, I uh, picked up my Bible and opened it up and this little yellow sheet of paper came out and it was a song from my friend Susan, a little poem, and I put it to words and, uh, or put it to music, I'm sorry. And, uh, you know, just really kind of hit for the uh, time and everything. And it really spoke to me. It's called Jesus Still Loves Me.
Don't forget to love him too. He is the light that shines in you. Think about him all the time. When so many things. And I know that Jesus still loves me. He is my way. He is my cure. Think about him all the time. When so many things. Jesus asked Peter to come out and walk on the water and to keep his focus on him. And when he kept his, when he stopped focusing on Jesus, he started to sink. And it's like, you know, and that's kind of where some people's thoughts are today. You know, they see everything negative going on and they just start sinking and sinking. And it's like, I'm still trying to be as perky as I can and I still feel pretty good inside about everything. And you know, I think it's just mainly because I'm keeping my focus on the board. And I encourage all of you to do that and kind of spread that word out there and help everybody out as best as possible.
Psalms this morning. And if you have your Bibles with you this morning, turn with me to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24 is the last uh, chapter in the Gospel of Luke. Um, here in a second, we'll be starting at verse 13. And while you turn there, Danny, uh, his last song there was talking about, you know, us in life having questions. And our story this morning looks at uh, two fellows in the Bible. Um, and had a lot of questions themselves that they were trying to figure things out. And I think that today, as we go through life, uh, we have a lot of questions um, in general through life. Just as, as humans, uh, and trying to understand what God's will is and trying to understand what God's plan is for us, we have a lot of questions. Uh, but as we look at what's going on in the world today, all of these things, um, it can be discouraging and it can draw us to seeking answers. In life today. So we want to look at a story. Before we read, just kind of put this um, in perspective of where we find Luke chapter 24. Uh, Christ had been crucified on the cross, and he had risen from the dead three days later. And that very morning, as we celebrate his Resurrection Sunday or, or Easter Sunday, uh, we see that Mary and Martha and the ladies went to the tomb, and, and it was empty, and they were met there by the angels, and the angels spoke with them. And reading in between the different Gospels and Scriptures, we see that, that they went back and they, they told the disciples in the upper room. We saw uh, Peter and John run to the tomb. And later that day is the event that we're about to read. This is commonly referred to as the, the walk to Emmaus, or the, the fellows that are walking to Emmaus. Um, so follow along with me. i got a handful of Scriptures I'm going to read before we dig into our message. But we're going to be reading in Luke chapter 24, starting in verse 13. And Luke says, And behold, two of them went that same day to the village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together, in reason, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as you walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered and said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed in word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we, we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, a certain women also of our company made us astonished which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And a certain of them which were with us went to
to the sepulcher and found it, even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. And he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ, who suffered these things, to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the scriptures that the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh into the village, and whether they went and made, at, made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for this it is toward evening, and the day is first spent. And he went to tarry with them, and they came to pass, as they sat at meat, and they with them, and he took bread, and blessed it, and brake it, and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn with us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened up the scriptures? Let us pray this Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you today. Thank you for bringing us back together in your house this week. And thank you for those that's watching online that may not be able to gather with us today. And Lord, we want to give you this hour of service, this time that we gather together in your house or wherever we may be. We, we come not in our own selves, in our own mind, but we come in your name. And as scripture says, where two or three are gathered together, there you will be in the midst. And just like this story we read, where two or three were gathered, there you were in the midst as well. So be with us today. Speak to our hearts. Find us with whatever burden we may have as we carry today as we come into this house. Speak to us, deliver us, in Jesus' name, amen. As we look at this, these passages of scriptures, I know I read a lot today in looking at this story, but I want to recap it and, and to be able to understand what was going on here. As you can imagine, there was a lot of unrest in Jerusalem. As we spoke on, on Easter, on that Resurrection Sunday, that, that there was a lot going on. It was Passover week, and, and, and Jews from all over the area, all the way from Greece, had come down, and all over Israel, and they, they were there in Jerusalem. A, a, a huge crowd, you can just imagine, shoulder to so, shoulder, you couldn't get through. And during that week was the week that Christ would be put to death. There was many witnesses that saw him drag the cross through the town. There was many witnesses that saw him being beaten and tortured. There was many witnesses that saw him hang and die on that cross. These fellows here were, we believe, one of those witnesses. They were there in the town. And it even says that they were with the disciples. Because it says, those of our company that had went there. So we would further believe that they were some of the close followers of Christ. And they were broken hearted of what had just happened to Jesus. They had heard his teachings. They had accepted him as their Messiah. They had looked upon him. But things were not going the way that they planned. Things were not going the way that they thought would happen. And they even knew what he said about the third day. It says that, that, that he said that he would arise on the third day. They knew that, did they not? They even said that morning that women of their company had went, Mary, Martha, and the ladies had went to the tomb. And they saw this visions of angels. They had heard that report, but they were skeptical. They had heard the report of John and Peter running to the tomb and finding it empty, but they were skeptical. And so here they were on this seven mile journey from Jerusalem uh, westward over to Emmaus. And they were just talking through all of the questions and unanswered questions that they had of everything going on. I thought about this story this week as I, as I was thinking about what we're going through today. There's a lot of questions that we have in our society and in this world today. A lot of questions that honestly, that we may not be able to answer. Questions that we may not even be able to answer on this side of heaven. But it doesn't stop us from wondering. It doesn't stop us from searching. It doesn't stop us from, from trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together and understand what God's plan is and understand what God's will is. There's a few things in this story that I want to draw to our attention today. Is that when these men were walking and they were pondering upon all of these questions and everything that was going on, Jesus appeared to them. You see, Jesus still appears to us today. Maybe not physically like he did these fellows here. 
Maybe not like he did in the, the locked room as they did with the disciples. But Jesus sent to us his Holy Spirit to live within us, to stir up our heart, to open up scriptures, and to be able to speak to us when we are searching for answers in life. How do we know that scripture is clear? Scripture says that he's a very present help in time of trouble. Jesus told his followers that he would never leave them nor forsake them in life. You see, as we are looking for answers in life, we need to follow the scriptures and we need to have ears ready to hear. To hear what the Lord has to say to us. He may not appear to us like he did these fellas, but he can speak to us within his within our heart. He can be with us. We, I already mentioned this in our prayer this morning. That the scripture says where two or three are together in his name, there he will be in the midst. I think about these fellas. There were two of them, were they not? And, and they were drawing upon the Lord. They were drawing upon God for answers on what was going through. And guess what? There he was in the midst. A lot of times we overlook that because we think of the fact that, well, that's talking about today. And it means today that if we go to God in prayer, there he'll be in the midst. But he comes to us in a little bit of a different way than he came to these fellows there as they were walking to Emmaus. He came to them personally, face to face, but they were so bogged down with what was going on that their eyes were not open until later to understand who he was. Sometimes we get so bogged down with things in life. The answers to the questions that we're looking for, the things that are in the media, the things that, that we witness and we see outside of this world, that sometimes that we are blinded to the fact that Christ is right there with us all the time. We're looking and we're saying, where's God? Today, there are people in this country saying, where's God in this pandemic? Where's God in all this evil and hatred in this world? You know, God never left us. He's never left us. God has never left the church. God has never left his children. We may have left him. The church as a whole, churches across this country, may have ran him out of the building for one reason or another. But he has never left us. He said, I will always be with you, even unto the ends of the world. Did he not? He has always been here and will always be there for us. But we just need sometimes to open up our eyes and realize that we're in the presence of the Lord. Sometimes we wait until we feel those goosebumps, so to speak, at church and say, Hey, we experienced God's presence today. He was with us today. God was with us the whole time. Sometimes we just need to have ears ready to hear. Sometimes we need our eyes to open to see that He's been with us. And that he's speaking to us. When we look at this story, one of the other things I want to draw our attention to is how he spoke to them. He spoke to them on going back and looking at the scriptures. He, he went back to the prophets and all the things that the prophets had said. Because they were confused. They didn't understand. They, they saw Christ as the Messiah. But they didn't understand how the Messiah was going to be beaten, bruised, tortured, put to death, and buried in a tomb. The last images that they have saw, they saw of Christ, was one of a, a bloody death, of a torturous death. And, and as I kind of mentioned on, on Easter when I preached a different message, that, that the fellows there that had witnessed that, they had to have some type of trauma. If we would think today, if we would witness something of that nature, if we would witness a car accident that we were there and, and saw something so gory of that, many of us would have trauma after that. And, and his closest followers, his closest companions, the ones that loved him the most, that witnessed his death, his torturous death, they had to have some type of trauma in them. Of what they had just went through, what they had just experienced, full of questions and answers that they could not fulfill. Christ shows up right on the scene. He says, I want to speak to you. I want to speak to your heart. I want you to know the fullness of the prophecies of the scriptures. And how did he do that? He did it by unfolding the scriptures. I have underlined in my Bible, um, in verse 27, it says, And he began at Moses and all the prophets, and he expounded unto them all the scriptures that this concerning himself. Now can you just imagine as he was going through and he was talking of the Old Testament. As he was telling them of all the prophets. The prophet Isaiah that he was saying that he would be led to the lamb as, as a lamb led to the slaughter. And it says, I fulfilled that. 
As he talked about all the other prophecies that we see. Even in Psalms, there's many prophecies of Christ in Psalms. And he could just show that Christ fulfilled that. He did fulfill that. He did raise on the, on the third day. Just because you didn't see it, doesn't mean it didn't happen. You see, the way that they pictured and thought Christ would be was the way that he was when he was hanging on the cross. See, a lot of times in culture today, we get blinded because we think that Jesus is going to appear a certain way in our life. And when he appears and does things differently, then we question if it was even him. And we question to the point that, that many of us may, may have delayed coming to God in our life because we expected a certain way of Christ. You know, we look at Christ as we have this painting on the back of the wall. You know, this, this glorious uh, uh, white man with this good uh, complexion and flowing hair. And I'm sorry to say, that probably wasn't what Christ looked like. You know, that's just our picture of him. Um, and I guess that's okay. You know, because we're all made in the image of God, and I guess that's in a way an image of God. But Christ looked different, I'm sure, being in the Middle East. And that's not what Christ looked like. That's just the way that we pictured him. That's the way that we think that he is going to come to us in that aspect. But Christ comes in all different types of ways, speaks in all different kinds of ways. But the Bible is clear. There is only one way to God. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. That is through Jesus Christ. And unless that we understand that and accept that, there's no way for us to be in communion with God. There's no way for us to have forgiveness of sins, and there's no way for us to live eternity. It's not, you know, I spoke last week, and I spoke in our Bible study, that I believe it was the Sunday before, that, that this world, that there's a lot of opinions in this world. I saw something the other day that says, you know, we all have opinions. And we really don't want to hear others' opinions unless it's our own opinion just coming back to us. Isn't that right? You know, that's the only way that we really want to hear other people's opinions because we're all opinionated. And believe it or not, there's a lot of people that has opinions on God. And they have opinions on, 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 on how He does and doesn't forgive and all of these things. But the only truth is Jesus Christ. He says, I am the truth. I am the way. The only way is Jesus Christ. The only true book is the Word of God that we have, that we hold in our hands today. It's the only truth that we have. It's not the way that we that we build or what we picture God to be. It's the way the Bible pictures God to be. And I think that's a lot of the problems that we have in this world today. That, that people have so many opinions on what they want to believe in God, but they don't follow it up with Scripture or back it up with Scripture. The last thing I want to draw our attention to here today is that I believe as he went through the Old Testament, and he was going through the prophecies, as they talked about the Messiah, he said, that's me. I am the Messiah. That, that is I. The, 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 the fourth man that was in the fiery furnace, the Shadrach, the Meshach, and Abednego, that looked like the man of God, the son of God, that was me. That was me. This morning I played a song uh, before service, and, and I know we were all kind of coming in and setting down. I don't know if you caught it, but the last song we sung says that I am. And it kind of talked about that. That way, that's the reason I selected that song this morning. And I'm going to read these uh, the, the words of this song here in a second. But it goes through and says, I am. And the thing about Christ is throughout the Gospels, he referred to himself as I am, fulfilling prophecy. He went through many occasions and says, I am the vine, and, and, and I am the good shepherd, and all of these things. And I want to read the verses of these songs, and uh, the, verse of this, the verses of this song this morning. And I believe it goes right along with this, showing that he is the great I am. It says, I am the shepherd, and I am the door. I am the good news to the weak and the poor. I am the righteous one, and I am the lamb. I am the ram and bush of Abraham. I am the ultimate sacrifice for sin. I am the beginning, and I am the end. I am Jehovah, and I am the king. I am the Messiah, David's offspring. I am the high priest, and I am the Christ. I am the resurrection, and I am the life. I am the bread, and I am the wine. I am your future, so leave your past behind. I am the one in the midst of two or three. I am your tabernacle, and I am your jubilee. 
I, I am hope, I am peace, I am joy, I am rest. I am comfort and relief from your stress. I am strength, I am faith, I am love, I am power. I am your freedom this very hour. You see, the, same, the things that we look for 2,000 years later after Christ today, He is the one that we long for. He is the one that our heart longs for today. The peace, the hope, the, the unity that we long for in society and our country today. He is the one that we need to turn to. He is the one that we need to put first in our life. He is the one that is the only way to everlasting life with God the Father. He is the one that this world is seeking. He is the one that our heart is seeking in life. We can chase after things in this life, but He is the one. And I'm amazed as we looked at this story and we come to the come to the conclusion of this story that they went down and they sat and had dinner. It was getting close to dark at night, and he had. And they asked him, "We so we just love this conversation we had. We just love that." Isn't that like that when we're talking to the Lord? We just love the conversation we're having. When the Lord is opening up scriptures to us, and, and let me tell you, it, it doesn't matter. We can read a story 20 times in our life, but until we're going through a hardship, God will open up scriptures in a way that we've never seen and understood it before. And I believe they were seeking answers, and He opened up scriptures that they were just so blinded that they couldn't understand before that. And their hearts began to warm. And it, it says that did not our hearts burn within us when he talked with us by the way? And when he opened up the scriptures? That's the way Christ speaks to us today in his Holy Spirit. He opens up scriptures. He speaks to us. And as he broke the bread and, 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 and gave of the wine there that they were gathered together there at, that, at, at their meal. Their eyes were open and they realized he was the one. He was Christ. He was the one that, that, that appeared to them in the locked room. He was the one that, that Thomas denied because they, he couldn't see it himself. They denied it because they didn't see him as son. What did Christ say to Thomas? Blessed are those that have not seen him. Yes. Today we believe by faith. We may not see him physically, but by faith, we mentioned this last week, our, our Christianity that we have, our relationship. And we use a lot of big terms in religion a lot when you think of that. But it's as simple as just a relationship with Christ. That's all it is. That's all God wanted when he sent his son down. He wanted to have a relationship with us. And through that relationship, he is able to help us not just answer questions that we don't, don't have an answer to. But he's able to be the dearest friend that I've ever had. As we sing that song. He's able to be closer than any brother or any sister or any companion that we have, any spouse or any family member or mother or father. He is closer than any of that can be that we can experience on earth. The love that he has for us is so pure that, that no love on this earth can, can compare to the love of God that he has for us today. And all he wants is a relationship with us. That's all it is. As being a Christian, it's just having a relationship with Christ. It's just our heart burning because we love Him so much. And not just the fact that he, he speaks into our hearts, but that we want to share it to this broken world because their hearts are burning for answers just like this. You know, we like to look at others and we like to, to, to rationalize sin and we like to, to say, well, this person's probably worse off than me. But we're all on the same sinking boat when we think about it. We're all like Peter sinking because we've all taken our eyes off Christ. We've all found our situations that maybe even we've relied on him for a while, but we got so caught up in our situations that we've looked past him, and, and, and then we're saying, how do we get to where we're at? All it is is a relationship. Relationships at time take work. We can all agree to that. But we must have a relationship with Christ, and that's all he wants. It's that simple. It's not complicated. It's not, not some complicated philosophy or doctrine or, or, or overwhelming knowledge that we have to have in Scripture. It's as simple as understanding that God loves us, that He sent His Son to die for us, that we're sinners in need of grace, and we can only find that in Him. That's that simple. And asking Him to come into our heart. It's that simple. It's not complicated. And then living a, living a life with Him. We could all be standing this morning. Uh, Dan and Leslie, if you would come this morning, and I know that, that we can't have our traditional altar calls right now and gather up here, but if we could all bow our heads, I want to do something similar that we did last week. If everyone could bow their head this morning. And I'm going to ask you, if you 
would like me to remember you and pray for you this morning, would you just lift your hand and put it back there? I see that hand. I see that hand. Those hands. Any others? Whatever the name may be. Maybe for you personally. Maybe you just, you want me to pray for someone else in your life. I saw those hands. Any other hands this morning? Just a sign. No one looking around. Just me and God of knowing that you have a prayer request this morning. We saw those hands this morning, and, and we want to pray for you. Maybe those that may be watching us online this morning, those in our congregation, or those that just stumbled across our feet today, that heard something maybe a little different. Maybe you're seeking answers to the questions of life. Christ is the answer. Let us pray for you this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you today. Lord, you saw these hands from the throne room of heaven. Christ, I ask you to go and, and make intercession on behalf of the hands and the hearts that were raised this morning. You know the battles that are being fought in these pews today. You know the battles that are being fought in the homes. You know the battles that are being fought across this country. But you are the answer. You are the light in a world of darkness. You are the solution that we need to our problems. You are the key to unlock our chains. You are the door to the pathway of righteousness. You are the one that our heart longs for. Jesus, I ask that you will pour in to these hearts today. Answer these requests. Answer the request, that, and, and we know that, that, that the answers may not come instantaneously, that you may be working things out in our lives that we may not know until days down the road. But give us patience, or give us encouragement to know that you have not left us nor forsaken us, and you're going with us even into the ends of the earth. For our heart desires and longs for you. Lord, I ask this very moment that you fill that. May we know that you have met with us today. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, we're going to have Dan, if you would lead us in a word of song. We just ask everybody to stay where they're at. But maybe with the words that we sing today, that we can just draw the Christ, and adopted the word of God as our rule of faith and practice 
We now give ourselves to one another by the will of God in the solemn covenant. We promise by His grace to love and obey Him in all things, to avoid all appearances of evil, to abstain from all sinful amusements and unholy conformity to the world, from the sanction of the use of the cell and intoxicating beverages, and to provide things honest in the sight of all men. We agree faithfully to discharge our obligations in reference to study of the scriptures, secret prayer, family devotions, and social worship, and by self-denial, faith and good works, endeavor to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We will not forsake the assembly of ourselves together for church conferences, public worship, and the observance of the ordinances of the gospel, nor fail to pay accordance to our ability for the support of the church, of its poor and of its malevolent work. We agree to accept Christian admiration and reproof of, with meekness to watch over one another and love and endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the balance of peace and be careful of one another's happiness and reputation. And to seek strength into, to the weak, encourage the afflicted, ab, ab, not <laughs> abominish the hearing, and as far as we are able, promote the success of the church and of the gospel. We were everywhere, everywhere hold Christian principles sacred and Christian obligations and enterprise supreme, counting it our chief business in life to extend the influence of Christ in society, consistently praying and toiling that the kingdom of God may come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. To this end, we agree to labor with the promotion of educational and denominational enterprise, the support of missions, the success of Sunday schools, and the evangelistic efforts of the salvation of the world. And may the God of peace sanctify us wholly and preserve us blameless unto the coming of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Uh, this time, Keith, if you would come forward. Uh, uh, Keith Lincoln, he, he began to, to attend our services back at the beginning of the year. And uh, back at the end of February, uh, if you just want to stand right here uh, for, for me this morning, uh, he approached me at the end of February and, and said that he'd like to join the church. Uh, he asked if he could talk with me, and, and we went over a, little, a few things, uh, what as a church and a denomination that we stand for and, and what we understand. And, uh, and as his profession is being saved by Jesus Christ uh, and being, being a Christian, uh, we would like to take him in our congregation to this morning. Um, and so to do so, uh, we like to open up the church for business, and I need a motion uh, from the floor for someone to make a motion to accept Christ, or to accept uh, Keith into our congregation. Okay, do we have a second? Dan seconds that. Uh, all those in favor of the motion to accept Keith into our congregation, say aye. 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 Both say nay. Motion carried. And so, Keith, we love you today. Uh, unfortunately, we can't come around and handshake you and hug you like we would normally do. But let's just give Keith a round of applause. <laughs> you want to say anything? Uh, yeah, I, I, it's a true privilege to for you to let me come in here. Uh, it's everything God does for me is a privilege just by grace. What drew me here was as fast as the first thing in this morning was no different than ever. Open the word of God. Wow, is that rare. I'm telling you, it's hard to find. I've searched all over this city for a church that the pastor preaches the word of God. You also have shown very true Christ love for me. And, and I, I can't thank you enough. And I do promise that I strive for those things. Every day, every waking minute, I can say that I strive for those things. And I definitely pray for you and thank you for some of my heart. I have one thing now. If I sit in the back, I've had a bunch of backs. I broke my neck and I got a lot of pain. So I sit in the back and I have to get up and move all the time. It's not because I want to, that's why I said I don't want to disrupt the service. Just ignore me <laughs> and realize that hey, he's not quite normal. Just <laughs> so, 
pain pimped her idea on my So, and, and I didn't shave or anything. I got halfway here and I realized I didn't shave. And what a day to be up there. But I just thank him, praise God, for you being here. Thank you. Amen. Amen. support to me in the last several weeks and, and months. He, he's texted me almost every week and encouraged and, and uh, he, he's ready. Uh, him and I had some conversations. He's ready to do some outreach in, in this community and around the neighborhood and uh, I've kind of helped us all up a little bit just with everything going on in the virus, uh, but he's on fire for the room and, and we're so glad that you're part of our congregation today. So we, we thank you. Uh, before we dismiss, is there any announcements? Anybody that has something to say? Maybe a testimony or something before we dismiss this Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you. Any more? <laughs> All right, anyone else this morning? If not, it's a good place to be today, isn't it? You know, when, when you've been out of here for so long, uh, you miss one another. Uh, and you miss, you know, even the Lord can speak to us in our homes. But, uh, you know, it's something about us coming together with one heart um, and one mind and seeking the Lord to be with us. And he shows up. It's amazing today. Um, so as we dismiss, everyone just stay seated. Uh, remember, a uh, tithe and um, offering bucket is in the back if you leave. Uh, if you'd like to contribute to that, uh, we do appreciate it. And after I close in prayer or have someone close in prayer, um, one of the ushers will dismiss you by a row. Um, we'll play some music softly. Uh, remember our uh, Sunday evening Bible, or Bible study is online only. Uh, 5 o'clock tonight on one of our platforms. We invite you to, to watch along with us at 5 o'clock. Um, actually, if you were early riser, you may have already watched it this morning. Um, I said it to premiere accidentally at 5 a.m. and not 5 p.m. So if you were on Facebook at 5 a.m., you would have watched it. So I had to reset that. Um, but uh, it, it'll air tonight at 5 p.m. So uh, if you're able, we, we it's just something about joining us together and watching it. But if not, uh, you can watch it later this week as we continue in Mark chapter 7. Uh, so we all bow our heads today. Um, Eric Pegram, will you dismiss us in prayer this week?